Planet of the Humans, a new film on green energy, has become the subject of intense debate in the environmental movement. The film's executive producer, Michael Moore, he had this to say in response to his critics on our show in a recent interview. Let's take a listen. We are lifetime, lifelong environmentalists. And if we can't say to each other, hey, look, we might be on the wrong path here because we're not winning this battle. Everybody knows it. Everybody watching this knows. Are we winning the battle against uh, the climate emergency that we're in the middle of? No. So if we're not winning, why don't we have the discussion about what we need to do? Because it cannot go on any longer. One of the documentary's most vocal critics is Academy Award-nominated filmmaker Josh Fox, whose film Gasland covered the dangers of fracking, and he joins us now via Skype to share his concerns. Josh, we're so glad to have you on the program. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. It's great to be on. So one of the central messages of the film is essentially that renewable energy is not the panacea that it is made out to be. Um, what do you think that they got wrong here? Well, basically, they got wrong everything on that subject. I mean, renewable energy works. Renewable energy is the only way we can safely decarbonize the planet at a massive scale. Um, and, you know, I, I'm not just saying this because it's my opinion. This is a fact. The fact of the matter is that renewable energy, wind and solar, represent the, the way that we can reduce carbon in our atmosphere. So to attack the basic premise that renewable energy works is patently absurd. And the film does this over and over and over again. And so they do it in various deceitful ways. Um, yeah. They show solar panels that are from 12 years ago, and they say, oh, my God, these solar panels are completely inefficient. Well, they happen to be light years in the past in terms of renewable energy development. They look at a wind farm, and they go, well, there's more energy going into this wind farm in terms of building it than is coming out. This is absolute nonsense, and it's on the level of fossil fuel misinformation, and that's what I go into in my piece in The Nation which is backed up by science from NREL, from Stanford, from the IPCC. Um, the entire scientific community accepts that renewable energy works and it is our path forward. The whole Green New Deal is based on it. Almost all modern environmentalism and climate action is based on the idea that renewable energy is our path forward. So, Josh, um, to play devil's advocate here, um, the filmmakers say that re renewable energy and, and many of the things that you're discussing here would never be able to make up for the gap that they see in the growing amount of carbon that's being emitted. And that based upon that fact, the only way that we could reliably or reasonably deal with a climate conversation is to talk about the growth of population and of consumption by humans in a capitalist system. What's your response to that? Well, are, there's so many different responses to that. First of all, um, renewable energy does work. We have something called the Green New Deal. We have an incredible proliferation of 100% renewable energy plants that are peer-reviewed and tested by science. So to say that it can't make up the gap is untrue. It is a, a challenge, and it will require an FDR-like mobilization, such as the world has not seen, um, in terms of pushing forward that agenda. But this is the last moment we have to do that in the face of climate change. The IPCC is telling us that we have to reduce our emissions by 50%, okay? 50% in the next 10 years. That means we have to replace 50% of the fossil fuel technology in the world, or more than that, with renewable energy. If you're going to make a similar argument in terms of population without dealing with renewable energy, right, without dealing with other forms of decarbonization, which the film doesn't go into, you're talking about cutting the population in half mm -hmm. in 10 years. Now, that sounds to me like eco-fascism. That sounds to me like something extraordinarily scary. And this film trots out old white man after old white man telling us we need to reduce population. Now, it... it <laughs> It well, is I, I want to be fair, though, Josh. Yeah. Do so. I Hold don't actually. I, I pressed him on that. I watched on that the front film. As well. They yeah. don't say that, so I don't yeah. want to mischaracterize how far oh, no, the film the goes. But they do talk about over. population. I mean, also, look, the reality is, and I don't know if this is, you know, pro you point or pro them point. Um, we, you know, consume way more as a wealthy nation than you know the impoverished nations of the world do. But I, I want to dig in on your point on renewable energy, because I think this is the crux that's really important. So is your argument that 
They were right maybe 10 years in the past, but now the technology has evolved so that renewable energy actually is a, you know, a workable solution. And I also want to deal with the point of they're essentially arguing that you can't pretend like we can just continue living the way that we are and solar and wind are magically going to fix it or any other innovation is magically going to fix it. Um, do you disagree with that point or is that, is, is that a valid point? Renewable energy is not magic. Renewable energy is science. Science and research and technology. Those things are a part of our reaction to this. So saying that these people were right 10 years ago actually puts the film in, they weren't right 10 years ago, but it puts the film in the proper context. What this film has done is took, taken arguments that are from 10 years ago and put them, put them in the future right now. So we're seeing, the, this film completely ignores the renewable energy and the environmental movement of the last 10 years. Michael Moore came on your program and he said, we need a new environmental movement. Well, the film entirely ignores the new environmental movement. It ignores the Green New Deal. It ignores Fridays for Future. It ignores Greta Thunberg. It ignores the divestment plans of, uh, that has divested trillions of dollars of Bill McKibben and Naomi Klein. It completely ignores the anti-fracking movement. It ignores the 100% renewable energy plans. It ignores the advances in renewable energy technology. It ignores all of those things. And then comes out and, and pretends that interviews that are from 10 years ago and technology that are from more than 10 years ago is adequate to talk about the crisis right now. But I do think that advocating for population control at a moment when we're in a global pandemic that is raging out of control um, is unconscionable and unbearable. And right. in fact, we, we, we have to be fair here. I, like I said, I, I press them specific I, because I saw the same notes of what you're talking about. And I do believe that is the undercurrent. But I did press them on whether they're advocating for population control. Well, and they, they did not. Do, and they denied it. And look, we have to be fair uh, just as Let we're being just, fair to you. Hold on a second. Because if you say renewable energy doesn't work and you say that the population is the problem, that obviously is an inference in talking about um, addressing the global population problem. And that's what they are saying. But they don't say we need to reduce population by educating women. We don't say we need to reduce population by green development. All of these things are strategies that perhaps are based in equitable notions of how do we deal with um, uh, growth and population. But if you say your basic well, consumption, premises, I mean, consumption, and consumption is work. consumption is the basic, other. The other piece okay. here, but I want to get to I want to get to another some, part of the film like before we get before we get into that. Yeah, the fossil fuel industry is a global pandemic. The fossil fuel industry kills five to seven million people a year in air pollution. That's ten thousand people a day. So if we stop polluting the earth with fossil fuels, we save thirty trillion dollars annually in healthcare costs, and we save five point two at the low estimate, million lives. To advocate for such a thing is absolutely unconscionable at this moment. When we have a way out, we have mm. renewable. So Josh, the other part of the film that you were critical of is um, they focus a lot on bio, biofuel and biomass, which a large portion of which, which is classified in certain circumstances as part of the renewable energy mix. And a large proportion of that essentially means basically burning trees, which is not a very sort of environmentally friendly approach. Um, what is your critique of, of the way that they talk about that particular piece of this? Well, I'm glad you brought it up. The film is obsessed with biomass, and it brings up biomass for about 45 minutes. And it's the majority of the discussion in the film. And it leads people to believe that biomass is a giant problem, that everyone is advocating for biomass, and we really need to work on biomass. <sighs> biomass is 1.4% of the United States energy mix. As I talked to Tony and Graffia at Cornell University, he says it's inconsequential. The people that they go after in terms of biomass, Bill McKibben, have not been advocating for biomass. In fact, Bill McKibben is on the record many, many times since 2016 as saying, I am not for biomass. The renewable energy plants that I advocate for, that most environmentalists advocate for, do not talk about biomass. This is yeah. a straw man <laughs> argument. And it is, and it's, it, see, this is the, the essential problem with the film is this. People don't have a ready understanding of renewable energy in the same way that we have renewable, uh, a ready understanding of a lot of other kinds of technology, right? We understand that certain car, like a Prius, has a better efficiency rating than like a 1979 T-Bird. But this film trots out 
a solar panel from 2008 and says it's the same thing. This film capitalizes on the fact that people don't understand renewable energy and renewable energy literacy is very low. And that is deceptive. And they okay. know it's deceptive. So Josh, I want this, this kind of gets to the last point I want to make with you, which is you've led a really concerted campaign basically to shut this film down. And my real question is, is why not, why is it not at least sparking some conversation or debate? Look, you're making a lot of claims here. I'm saying that it's backed in science. That's not necessarily the case, or it's very much in dispute about, you know, trillions of dollars and, and, and deaths and many of these things. Look, it can all be up for debate. That's one thing I've absolutely learned within this discussion. Why the this effort the to try and cancel the film? That's, that's what I don't well, understand. First of all, let me just yeah. clarify. We ask the filmmakers themselves for a retraction as if we were approaching a newspaper that had published a story that was incorrect. And that is not censorship, that is not canceling the film, that is us mm -hmm. as the community of scientists and filmmakers saying to the filmmakers, listen, you guys, you've got all this stuff wrong, you gotta pull this and you gotta reconsider what you're doing. That is very, very different than censorship. But to say that we are having a debate echoes the very things that the fossil fuel industry does. The fossil fuel industry says, oh, well, we have to have a debate about climate change. We have to have a debate about fracking. We have to have a debate about all these things that are scientifically proven in terms of the acceptance of the entire scientific community. So there is no debate about whether or not renewable energy works. There is no debate about um, the, the sig incredibly significant progress of the environmental movement. This film is doing these things in, in a way that's controversial, but I would argue that they're doing it for the sake of sensationalism. And they're doing it, um, well, look, I can't ascribe motivation, but all I can say mm -hmm. is they're wrong. And when you say, oh, well, we should debate these things, well, we're, we're, we're talking about the same thing that the fossil fuel industry has said for 10 years about climate change, or 20 years, or 30 years, or 40 years. ExxonMobil knew in the 70s that their product was going to cause climate change. In the same way, this film is taking things from the past and pro positing them as, as, as arguments from the future. They were approached by Bill McKibben to say, look, I don't, I don't approve of biomass. That is not my position. They ignored him. This is what we call deceit. This is what we call journalistic malpractice. They would rather villainize one of our climate heroes, one of our climate champions, then actually listen mm -hmm. to a man who's appealing to them on the same side saying, listen, hey, guys, you're getting this wrong. Why would you put a movie out that has information that's not factual? That is what they're doing across the board in this movie. And that's why so many people are upset about it. Look, I love Michael Moore. I've loved his films for years. It's extraordinarily difficult for me to do this. It's extraordinarily different for, difficult for somebody like Naomi Klein or Michael Mann. These are people with incredible reputations to come out and say, Michael Moore is wildly off track at this moment. And to do this at a moment when we are in an emergency, we're in a climate mm -hmm. emergency. And researchers, scientists, activists, campaigners from Greta Thunberg to Mark Jacobson at Stanford, from Bill McKibben to Naomi Klein are saying, we need to work on this. And we have an incredible moment here, we have a, the Green New Deal. The codification of the Green New Deal is not something to sneeze at. It, this film entirely leaves it out. The codification of the Green New Deal means 20 million new jobs. It means mm -hmm. a transformation of our, fo of our fossil fuel base to renewable energy. It, it, it means restoring the health of the planet. It yeah, means Josh, saving we've, we've, five, we've covered, we've covered the Green New Deal here. quite a bit and on it, the show. And Josh, means, I, I do want to ask you, though, one, yeah. one last question that's not about the film. That's a, a sort of affirmative, positive-looking question. Um, talk to us about what you think the critical next steps are in the environmentalist movement. And, and also, is it possible to get where we need to go in terms of climate change, but just by switching our energy mix, or do we have to also deal with consumption? What's your view on that? Nobody's arguing that simply renewable energy is the answer. That is another mischaracterization, mischaracterization in this film. The environmental movement and the Green New Deal has, is, is a multifaceted um, struggle. We know we have to do conservation of public lands. We know we have to scale back um, and, and by the way, let me just say this. Renewable energy and capitalism, which is another thing that's in this movie, don't mix. That's why the Green New Deal is a $17 trillion government plan. Renewable energy and socialism do a lot better together. Um, so when we're talking about runaway capitalism, we're talking about all the things that are the favorite um, are, are, you know, things for Michael Moore to talk about, we're in agreement about that. 
But the basic premise that renewable energy is, doesn't work is false. And when you start mm. off with a false premise, then you're going to go down the wrong road. Instead of going down the road of the Green New Deal and of, of, of a government program, which is what we need, an FDR-like mobilization on renewable energy to, to de deal with the climate emergency, we end up going down a whole bunch of half-baked crackpot things about, mm. about old population and neo-Malthusianism. And that's, the, that's where we end up with in this film. This right. film posits right. no we understand uh, that. actual solution. Right. So, so Josh, Josh, I'm, unfortunately, me. we have to. We're, we're out of time. Josh, we're so grateful but for your time today. We appreciate today. you for able to come on and to discuss this. Yeah, we try to give our audience all perspective, and we really appreciate you coming on and talking about your concerns here. So thank you so much. Great to have you. Thank you, thank you Josh. And people need to know that renewable energy works. That they should not feel the same doom and gloom and desperation that is in this movie. We have a movement that is worth campaigning for. They can thank certainly you. take that away from your interview. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Josh. Next on Rising, friend of the show David Sirota. He has some new reporting on Amazon. It's a big scoop, and you will not want to miss it. That's next.